Hi, my name is Steve and I have the wonderful job of being an archaeologist. What I do is I find out about the past by digging things up. And sometimes, if you're really, really, really lucky, you get to dig up human bones. Now, you don't often find human bones because, to be honest, they're organic. They can rot away. But when you do find them, you can get some really fantastic information about people in the past. I bet you all know what this is. Do you notice there isn't a lower jaw? The lower jaw is actually held on by muscle and tendons and those rot away and the lower jaw drops off. So this is just the top part of the skull. What could you possibly tell from that? I can tell by some of the features on here that this is probably male. It was an adult as well, I can tell that definitely. Front teeth are missing. Back teeth are actually in quite good order. There's no holes in them. This fella, even though he's lost teeth at the front, has got absolutely no cavities. I think, because of where I found this, that this is a Roman skull. And the Romans didn't have sugar. Their teeth didn't rot because of eating sugar. You can start to see that you can tell quite a lot from bones. I've got one here. This is the longest bone in the human body. It's your thigh bone. And if you're able to look really, really closely at this one, you can see that it's starting to get some holes, some pitting, some roughness here. But on the top surface, can you see that shiny area there, that really light, shiny area? That tells me that this person, the person who owned this leg some time ago, would have been in quite a bit of pain because this shows me that he was suffering from something called arthritis. So just from a bone, one bone, we can start to paint a picture of what this person's life might have been like. Now, the Romans, we know, were not particularly good at mending broken bones. This one here, can you see all of this new growth here? I've said the bones are living things. If you break them, they will make new bone to mend the break. And nowadays we're really lucky because our medicine is so good that if you do break a bone, it'll be set nice and straight. But because the Romans weren't very good with broken bones, it started off nice and straight. But can you see how there's a slight curve on it? It wasn't quite in line as the bone started to repair itself and grow all of this new bone. Remember what I said about bone continuing to grow? If you get an injury, the body will try to mend it. This particular bone tells us a real story. Again, this is the upper arm but it's got a huge cut right through it. And when you think there'd be muscle over that and skin, something has cut all the way through all of that, right down deep into the bone. And I can see, and you might be able to as well, that actually there's been no new bone growing. Nothing like that one where the body's tried to mend it. So remember what I said about an archeologist being a history detective. So I think that this person, he died very, very shortly after this injury was made. And again, if it was a Roman soldier, perhaps he was involved in a battle and somebody has cut right into the top of his arm and it doesn't look like he survived it. Remember how I said earlier on, could you tell whether just from a skull, somebody was male or female, a man or a woman, boy or a girl. Actually, if you want to know for sure, the best bones to use are these. And they come in two bits and they join just like that. These are your hip bones. There's actually a little notch here. And that gives you a really important clue whether the skeleton is male or female. Can you see how that's quite narrow, that slot there? This tells me this is almost certainly male, because that's a very narrow notch. If it was a woman, if it was female, this would actually be kind of 90 degrees, like a right angle, or even a little bit wider than that. But remember, I've also said that because these are organic, very often they don't survive very well in the ground. What sorts of materials do you think might survive really well in the ground? I've got some of them over here. So, I've spoken about the organic remains that don't necessarily last very well, and I've posed the question, 
what might actually do really well. Have you come up with anything? I'm just going to take these off because they're not a fashion statement. It's just that when you're handling organic things, you wear gloves so you don't contaminate with metal. Metal lasts really well in the ground, depending on what the metal is, of course. And the Romans used a lot of a metal called bronze. They also used brass, and that actually does quite well. Metal tends to survive reasonably well, and it's because we managed to find, as archaeologists, lots and lots of metal artifacts. We can actually start to build a bigger picture of Roman life. These strange looking things are all surgical, that's medical instruments. And so because these are found, we can make a modern copy to try and see how it might have worked. That's very much like something you might use nowadays. It's a pair of tweezers. I wonder if you know that the Romans were really, really keen on what we call hygiene. They like to be very, very clean, or as clean as they could possibly be. Little scoop there. That's for going in your ears to get earwax out. So from the evidence that we can find in the ground, we can start to make a bigger picture of what Roman life was like, particularly in terms of medicine. And of course, a big part of the Romans is their army. The Roman army actually had medici, that's Roman doctors, that would travel with them. And when they were in their Roman fortress, hundreds of miles away from Rome, they would even have a hospital. Just an idea of some of the things they could do was they would cut you open, a vein, and they would take blood out of you. And to get more blood out of you once they've cut a vein open, these things, which are called cupping glasses, these will be heated up and put over the cut and it will actually suck more blood out of you. And of course, one of the occupational hazards as a Roman soldier is you might get hit by an arrow. And the Romans had various different, these are Roman arrowheads, they had various different styles of Roman arrowhead. And because there are lots of different styles and sizes, to get those out, you need lots and lots of different sizes of little, what we would call forceps, for grabbing hold of them to pull them out. And I've said about hygiene. I wonder how many of you know what that is and what it was used for. I leave that for you to sort out for yourself. The final one I'd just like to tell you about, because it's a bit weird, is these things. These are called uvular forceps. If you ask your friend to open their mouth really, really wide, and you looked into their mouth, at the back there's a funny little fleshy thing hanging down. That's called the uvula. It can become infected, and then you get a very, very sore throat. So one cure if your uvula keeps getting swollen and inflamed is to take these and they have a serrated, that's a, a sore edge. You put that into the person's mouth and you grab hold of the uvula and you squeeze it with that and you give it a little twist and you cut it off. And that's going to cure your sore throat. So now, just have a think. Would you like to have been a Roman, or rather would you like to have been a Roman who wasn't feeling very well? Tessera. Found the mosaic.